Yo, what's going on, kings and queens? It's your boy Chaz Jackson coming back to you once again, representing GNG Gift and the Gift. Hey, I just want to personally take the time to tell you thank you for giving me your eyes and your ears once again as we get ready to dive deep into some inspiration that I pray will plant like a seed in your mind and assist you in becoming a greater version of yourselves. So if you've been listening to this live stream podcast, you know that we live by this motto that we are all gifted differently to make a difference. And I know there's a ton of difference makers that's either looking at this live stream or you're looking at a replay or possibly on the podcast. Go ahead and let us know that you're there. Share this out to anyone that you feel like will resonate with this phenomenal lady that's about to come on here and share some knowledge on how we can become greater version of ourselves as we dive into episode 14 with Tammy Matheny on finding the this is good during times of uncertainty. And go ahead, and get your pen and paper. I'm telling you, she's going to be bringing some value, some golden nuggets. But before I read off the short bio, I want to go over the mission statement of this platform. And it is uh, to encourage you as well as myself to take the daily challenge of becoming a passionate visionary who is determined to leave a legacy for themselves by adopting unwavering life values and serving others in an area of gifting led by God. And as we strive on a daily basis to make that a reality in our lives, uh, we're going to continue, like I said, on providing tips and techniques for young males on developing personal growth. And Tammy Matheny, I'm going to off this short bio. We're going to get a, get a roll and introduce her to each and every one of you. So Tammy is the owner of Refuse to Lose Coaching, LLC, and author of The Confident Athlete, Four Easy Tips to Build and Maintain Confidence and The Confidence Journal. As a mental game coach, she assists people in all walks of life, not just athletes, with improved confidence, focus, motivation, mental toughness, leadership, and teamwork. Tammy has a passion for helping others build a foundation of confidence. She has seen firsthand how confidence is key to success in any area of life. I am excited to introduce this powerhouse queen, Tammy Matheny. It's also special because we're uh, actually from the same hometown. You are live on GNG podcast live stream. Are you ready to get it, Miss Champion? I am. Thank you, Chaz. That introduction. Wow. I I'm ready to rock and roll. Oh, uh, I love it. I love it. And I know that was kind of brief what I read off. Is there anything else you would like to share with the audience that I did mention that you would like to know about yourself? I, I think you did a pretty good job. I, I appreciate that introduction and everything you said before that. You you have me motivated already. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. That is the name of the game. And I, I'm exceptionally excited to dive into our, our theme of finding the this is good uh, during the times of uncertainty. And as we take this journey on really uh, diving deep on what that concept means to you, do you care to kind of share with the audience your story of how you took your journey towards becoming a mental performance coach and kind of how they got started? Yeah, you know, as an athlete, um, back when I was coming up through school, there wasn't sports psychologists, mental game coaches, um, but I knew the, the mind had something to do with it. And, you know, I was never the fastest, strongest, quickest, smartest, but I had success in sports because physically and mentally, I was always at my peak. And so I knew there was something to it. So then I, that led me into coaching at the collegiate level. And as a coach, that was my best attributes of getting my players to be physically and mentally, uh, you know, again, at their peak. And so just was trying to get my hands on anything, but there wasn't books or materials back then. And I uh, ran into a, a guy named Dr. Patrick Holm, um, who's worked with a lot of professionals. And ha he kind of led me down this journey of getting certified. And I did it to better myself and to better my teams. And then slowly that led to a new career. So in, in a nutshell, there was a lot of twists along that journey. But in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's how I got to where I am now. Nice, nice. And it seems like 
he was like a real influence on you taking that journey towards being an athlete yourself. And I know uh, you was really big in tennis, right? Tennis was kind of like your main sport uh, as progression through. Tennis and basketball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I know in some of your other work, I, I, hear, I heard you share about your dad and how he was a huge influence on you mm -hmm. as far as your tennis game and building up to a tennis coach. Is that right? Yes, yeah. Um, he was actually, uh, he used to be a long time ago, football coach at East Rutherford. And he had always told me never to go into coaching. <laughs> You're the best well, high school in America, right? East <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you know, he was the uh, the the pre-modern day mental game coach without knowing that he was. And, you know, I could have the best match or game in the world and he would find everything I need to improve on. I could have the worst one in the world and he would find every positive I did. It, and it was real positives. He didn't make them off. So he always kept me, you know, right here, never too high, never too low. And uh, he always, you know, had me looking at, all right, this happened. So what are you going to do with it? Mm. And, and it, it kind of planted those seeds to uh, kind of my whole idea of this is good and finding the good and whatever does happen. Yeah, and for us not to get as big headed, it's kind of like he was wanting to, to set a standard of, hey, we'll accomplish this this particular goal, but we need to make this goal a journey and continue to get better and better and, and really stepping back and looking at the big picture because sometimes we can think that everything is unique or I have it all down packed and I have all the answers. I have this, you know, this skill to the top of its T. I'm the best at it, but I think it was Les Brown. He said something that really resonated with me. He said, we should all get mentors in our life because it's hard uh, to see the, the big picture when you're inside of the frame. Like, so meaning like if I'm inside of the frame, it's hard for me to truly see the whole idea of my true potential, you know, and that's kind of why we have to kind of pull and get uh, amazing people around us. And it definitely sounds like your dad and, and your other coach that you uh, previously mentioned kind of helped scale the way for you to get to where you are now. So that's good stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've been very blessed with people in my life, teachers, coaches, family members, you know, because I, I don't think any of us can have success alone. And I've been blessed with, you know, when I want to quit, when I want to turn in another direction because it's getting hard of having people remind me, you know, no, nope, let's keep going. So I just want to dive into it. Like, you got some some amazing stuff that I, I uh, truly, as far uh, from an athletic standpoint, like, I know you said like you ran like 40 miles at one point, right? You ran like 40 miles and and I know you kind of cycle. Cycling was a really big part of you, correct? Are you there? I lost you there. You there? Yeah, yeah. We, we're back. We're back at it. Yeah, but did you did you catch right. that about the the cycling? And I know you you. Uh, said you ran, rode over 80 miles in cycling and you ran over 40 miles. That's pretty impressive, man. Like, and, and when I'm thinking about this thing of during times of uncertainty, I know within a 40 mile span, like I got up to 18 miles at one point. I mean, this was years ago, but I couldn't imagine my, my, my mental compassion. And again, I know the, the training aspect and preparing for it. I know it's a whole different mindset in that uh, area. But just thinking of 40 miles, like, I know there was some point, like, you was just like, man, maybe I should stop or, or that, that, you know, that, that part of you is kind of, just kind of like, dude, I'm really, I tipped in 40 miles right now. <laughs> like, can you share like some tips and techniques of like, how did you push to, to make that goal? Like, that's phenomenal to me, <laughs> like, to throw 40 miles. <laughs> Well, you know, it's either phenomenal or crazy based on, you know, your opinion. But it, what I tell people, it's nothing special. Anyone can go out and run 40 miles if they want to and if they're willing to put the time. You know, anyone can go ride 80 miles if they want to and if they're willing to put them in the time. The, the thing is, I'm the only crazy one I know that's wanting to put in that time. But, no, it's a... I need to find stuff to push me. It's almost like my drug of what crazy thing can I try to do physically? And it really helps me as a mental performance coach of putting into play all the stuff I tell the athletes. 
And it's that battling, you know, I'm big on talk to yourself versus listen to yourself. When you listen to yourself, you're hearing that you're tired. Oh my gosh, you've got 20 more miles to go. Oh man, why am I doing this? But when you talk to yourself, you're like, nope, you got this. And you're reminding yourself of why you're doing it, how you're going to feel when you get done with it. So I'm a firm believer we got to talk because if we don't, that brain's going to like talk for itself and we're going to listen to the negative stuff that's coming out of it. So, you know, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, I'm big on body language, too. And if you smile, like you don't know how many times I smile when I run or, or I'm biking. And just like, yeah, I'm the only crazy person I know wanting to do this right now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but when you smile, it, it lets the body like relax and do what it can do. Uh, you know, so those are two of the biggest. They're simple, but man, they're so effective in anything that we do in life. Mm. You know, so, yeah, so, uh, so that that's still my biggest one. Yeah, I, I feel like yeah. you talk to yourself uh, even greater percentage of the day. So. Negative, positive self-talk definitely influence the way that you're approaching things, whether it's running, you know, academically, uh, physically, emotionally, and the way because you spend a lot of time with yourself, obviously, and and and, and how you approach that and how you uh, speak to yourself and encourage yourself personally is definitely going to help you reach where you want to go in life, and and also just. <clears throat> like how you're saying like the body language like if i come in walking with my shoulders down i, I think in one of my talks i, I kind of reference i don't know if you ever watched trolls before <laughs> but uh the bergens like i don't watch the movie like a hundred times my five-year-old so you still want this binge of watching that movie but if you if you uh remember the character the, um, the trolls or the bergens what they were called they would walk really over slumped and they was really depressed and versus you know standing up tall like that superman pose you know it, it actually changed the whole energy in a room just based on your body language and i can just imagine how even that plays a part in trying to push through uh, a strenuous exercise so yeah i truly believe what you what you definitely shared there and even talking about so your book i know you shared that you know prior to even your first book right um, there, there was times where you didn't feel that you was a capable writer and the people around you didn't necessarily influence you as a writer. So can you kind of share how that journey was for you to kind of recognize the validation within yourself and not necessarily looking for it from other people to kind of be at the position you are to uh, publish three books, right? So we got three books now. Yeah, three books. Um, starting a fourth right now. I don't know again oh, if nice. that's crazy. Or not, but <laughs> um, so you know, through high school and college, I, I made very good grades, except for anything that involved writing. And I would get back reports of great research, great info, like C or D on your writing, grammar, all of that. And so I just started again. I was listening to myself. I can't write. I can't write. I can't write. And that became like the story I was telling myself. And I actually had a, a teacher in high school and she really fed that belief. And I thought, all right, I'm really going to knock this book report out of the water. And I spent so much time on it and turned it in. I felt like it was the best work I've ever done. She hands it back after she graded it. F too good to be yours. So mm -hmm. that just fed that belief that, all right, see, I don't write. And I hung on to that like a rope around me, like it was my chain. And even as I became a mental performance coach, people would say, you need to write a book, you need to write a blog. Nope, nope, I don't write. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was just, that was easy. That was my comfort zone. And I finally had a coach challenge me. You talk to us all the time about getting out of our comfort zone, but what am I hearing with you with this book? And I was like, okay you're right so the the first book was to show myself that i could write that was the main purpose of it that was just to kind of like cut that chain and and then it's become contagious after that so uh you know that that's kind of my my story with uh writing nice nice and it was it was just kind of making it to that that peaking point of you know knowing that 
we perform at the level of our beliefs and not our potential. Like you said, your potential, you're writing your fourth book, and I'm sure you're going to write even more because you're a brilliant woman. Like, it's just changing that belief system to knowing, hey, I can do this. And, and that's phenomenal that, you know, you didn't let someone tell you that you couldn't do it and you didn't uh, keep that self-doubt in place and kind of broke that chain and, and push it forward to where you are right now. So that, that's really good stuff. This is good. This is good. I love that title. This is good. <laughs> I love that title. And also, like, I know even with the writing and I guess prior to the writing, you was actually you coached tennis, right? You coached at um, USC Upstate, right? And uh, you 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 coached the men's tennis team, right? And you guys kind of won. Y'all y'all had a winning record, right? That's pretty neat. And I I know you kind of said how you was like one of the first women to actually coach a, a male's team at one point. Yeah, so yeah. As, as far as that goes, when thinking about those men that, that you was coaching and thinking about the theme of finding this is good during the times of uncertainty, let's just say one of your players that was on that team, one of those males was having some uncertainty about you know where they are right now how the team is looking, how they are, as far as personal development, they have some uncertainty there. Is there any type of tip or technique that comes to mind that you are willing to share to kind of get them back on the right path that comes to mind? Yeah, you know, and and I still use this today and I used it as a coach, but it's like stay in the moment. Too often we get too far ahead. I'm not as good as this person or I'll never get here or and everything just seems so big. Instead of let's break it down. What do you need to do in this moment or in this practice, in this training session that will get you better? And I I think, again, we get too carried away by results or outcomes or thinking too far ahead. And we can't take care of the future unless we take care of the moment. Mm. So that was one of my biggest things that I would try to drive home. If we take care of the moment and do what we need to do in the moment, then the future is going to be taken care of for us. And, and I truly believe that in any walk of life, but we get too carried away of dwelling on the past, of what's happened in the past that's unfair or we lost our confidence with, or thinking ahead and having that anxiety or dwelling on the future. But the key is if you stay in the moment and take care of this moment as good as you can, and then the next moment, and then the next, then the future just kind of opens up for you. Mm. I love that. I love that. And, it, and one of you was talking about that, a quote that popped in my head, and it goes like, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is my everything. So, and I forget who actually uh, wrote, cited that quote, but I truly believe today is your everything. And knowing it's easier said than yeah. done, but I know I, I work on standing at 86,400 seconds you know, seeing what I can do just for today, because again, when we, when we not saying that we don't supposed to have vision and and kind of know where we're going and kind of painting that path and what your end game is, but at times, you know, you you can get so much boggled up in your mind. It can kind of be like a forest. And when we stay in the day kind of makes things like a garden and and you're able to uh, stay within that energy for today. So that's really good stuff. And, uh, do you still coach? Uh, you don't coach tennis anymore, right? Or no, no, I'm giving up the physical coaching, just the mental coaching. Just the mental. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. And um, all right, got a question for you. So out of everything that you've kind of done being in this mental performance coach position, I know you've uh, talked to a lot of amazing minds and, and coached a lot of players. What is the greatest lesson that you say that you've learned so far on your journey right now? on September the 2nd, 2020, what comes to mind? <laughs> oh, that, that's a loaded question. But just the first thing that popped off of my, my mind is to embrace the failure. You know, I, I used to be this perfectionist and hated to fail, hated to get a bad grade, hated to lose a game, hated to lose a set, whatever it was. But that shows us how resilient and how good we can be. We have to have failure to get ahead in life. And it took me a long, long time to really wrap my brain around that, that losing's okay, as long as I learn from it. Mm. 
you know, getting that F is okay as long as I learn from it. And, and that's, failure's kind of like our guide of how we're going to take the next step to get better. And I think too many people run from it. I know I did when I was younger. I wanted to run from any way I could fail and didn't try anything new or put myself out there. But I mean, that's, that shows us, you know, how good we, we can be when we fail and can bounce back. Um, I remember in high school, my senior year, uh, I, I hit a game winner against our central and they were like loaded that year. And I thought I was all everything, you know, I was big head, go to the church and, you know, everybody's congratulating me. And then my minister says, what would have happened if you'd missed that shot? Mm. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to think about <laughs> that. I didn't. I made we'll it. Talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, no, think about it. it because you're going to miss that shot one day, whether it's basketball or tennis or something, you're mm. going to miss it. So he's like, so I want to know how you're going to handle it when you do. And I was just like, it was such an uncomfortable conversation. And I went like, I, I, you know, but then I really thought on it that night and later. And he actually sent me a quote later that success is how high we bounce once we fall. And I'm sure most of us have heard of that, but I'd never really processed that or thought about it. And I think that's when I slowly started seeing that all right, you know, successful people are the ones that have fallen and have bounced back higher, not the ones that have just always had it the easiest and always stayed on top. That is gold. I hope you took my advice and got the pen and paper. She just dropped some jewels right there. I just <laughs> took that down. Success is how, how we bounce when we fall. And the first thing that comes to mind when I think about that is during obstacles, we have to seek the opportunities in those times. So like, COVID-19 and, and and so many other obstacles that's uh, been in our path in 2020 is kind of like stepping back and, and looking and evaluating and saying, how can I create solutions during the problem? And I truly believe for me, I'm, I, I can relate to you. I kind of ran away from situations where I was being challenged while I was, you know, being uncomfortable, whether it was from an athletic standpoint or academic standpoint or even relationships, you know, relationships got really serious or if it was something that was foreign to me, I would tend to find myself run away instead of embracing it and seeing that, well, how can we build and, and grow stronger from this situation, drawing a line and plugging in the blank and, and what I truly found out on my journey, and I'm still growing in this in this aspect, and I kind of want to get your opinion on how important you think this is, is asking questions. So many times, like, you can save yourself from so much failure and so much heartache and so much frustration just asking questions. And Jack Canfield, he said in one of his books, is success leaves clues. And just trying to find the clues, right? And, and the best way to find clues is just asking questions because I spent a lot of my life not really asking questions because I didn't want to look like I didn't know it all or uh, I didn't want to look like I was, you know, not intellectually there to <laughs> and, and, and look bad. But as I got older and as I began to learn about myself and, and kind of journey through what God's calling me to do, it's just like asking questions is a sign of strength. You Do you agree with that? I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I was similar to you growing up. I didn't want to ask a question. You know, that, that means I wasn't secure or I thought it meant it would show I wasn't confident or didn't know. But as I've gotten older, you are exactly right. It's it's a hunger. It's a growth mentality. It's a growth mindset of I might be successful, but I don't have all the answers. You're successful, but you don't have all the answers. Yeah. So we really can grow when we ask those questions. You know, I'm on the John Gordon team and, and he has this saying of, you know, be hungry, and but humble, humble and hungry. And being hungry means asking, learning from people. You know, we can learn from everyone that we meet. Mm. So, I, yeah, I, I fully agree with you there. Yeah, it's kind of like I feel like everybody comes in your path. There's something that you're supposed to take. Like and and. And even during the times where I kind of feel confused or anxious in that situation of meeting someone, I, I just kind of have to step back and say, you know, God, what do you want me to learn during this moment? And now obviously the answer comes immediately at times, sometimes it's years later or months, days, however the case may be. But yeah, I, I truly believe that. And obviously with our 
the motto of this show is we're all gifted differently to make a difference. And I, I truly believe each and every person has a unique gift that they are supposed to leave for their generation, the next generation to come. So I know there's a young individual that's looking at you right now and they haven't necessarily unlocked their gift. Is there anything that comes to mind that, that you would tell that person that's listening to you right now of, you know, that they're kind of uncertain on how to truly unlock their gift? Anything comes to mind to kind of encourage them to come forward and know that they're a dis difference maker? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is make sure you're not comparing because what I have experienced personally and with athletes I work with, the biggest barrier to finding out your gift or your strengths is when you compare yourself. Oh, I'm good at that, but look, Chaz is better than me at having a podcast. Or and we get we waste all of our energy comparing ourselves to those people around us or the people we want to be like. And so then it's almost impossible to figure out and really embrace your strengths and what you're meant to be. So that's my first thing is, is stop the comparison. You were born unique. And one of the exercises I have with athletes I work with is they have to list all the positive characteristics and traits that they see in themselves. And usually it starts out four or five. You know, but then it's like, no, next week you keep on through the week and you bring it back and I want more. And just having them start to open up that brain to start seeing the positive things that they do bring. Um, you know, I'm big on a five one. There's stuff we all need to work on. But every negative you think about yourself, you need to, to respond with five positives. So mm -hmm. I got stuff I need to work on but I'm going to focus on five positives and I'm good at too, because I, I'm a firm believer that what you focus on grows. That doesn't mean ignore the negative, but focusing more on what I do bring and then just allowing that to grow when I start focusing on that. Mm. And, I, and, I, and in my book, Little Learn Lead Powerfully, I, I talk about these 12 roles and one of the roles is a unique role. And it's generally when we're thinking of, the uniqueness at times we, we can think that we're the only person that's going through a situation or um, the only person that's kind of have this, this actual standard, but at times, you know, comparison can be beneficial, but it, it can also hinder you in, a, in kind of a way. And I, I truly believe like that actual comparison aspect of things, you know, <clears throat> we are all fearfully and wonderfully made, right? So I'm um, really diving into knowing that in, in the gift aspects, you are unique and, you know, you have something that you are only able to share to the world. And, you know, um, you know, out of 7.5 billion people, no one has your fingerprint, you know, and it's, it's, it's really owning that and, and understanding like you. And I like, I like how you kind of shared, like opening up, with those positive characteristics because this world is kind of built on, you know, the negative and, and really uh, feed the energy to the negative. So really dialing back into like, what am I good at? What are my strengths? And, and really kind of building off of that. And even with the comparison aspect, sometimes, you know, so, yeah, I could be stronger than you in one area. And, and if we can embrace that, hey, Chaz or Tammy strong in this area, but that other individual, you know, for me, in, in aspects of you, you know, you could be strong in the area that I'm weak in and we can kind of come together and help each other kind of embrace. And I can help you grow in this particular area. You can help me grow in another. Um, so not necessarily looking at things as, you know, oh, you know, he's goody two shoes and, and he's, I don't want to be around him because I'm weak in that area, but really just kind of coming together and kind of building on that communication aspect. And I know, you know, in your book, The Confident Athlete, you talk a lot about communication, right, and how important that is. And uh, we kind of talked about, you know, asking questions and, and really kind of growing in that factor as well. Yeah, yeah. To me, communication is the lifeline that we have. Because, you know, I believe that, like I said earlier, we don't get anywhere without other people. And so that's communicating 
with them our needs and communicating the questions to help us better. But also we have to work with each other. So we got to communicate. You know, when there's a lack of communication, there's a void. And nine times out of 10, that void is going to be filled with negative. We're just to assume. So I, I really feel like any relationship, team, business, personal, that the more you communicate, then the more that you can weather through any adversity that comes your way. So, you know, communication is like one of the top keys to be successful in anything in life. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. And is there anything else that kind of comes to mind that, that's, that's on your heart to share with the audience as far as, you know, during like knowing that this is good during the times of uncertainty? Is there anything that else that comes to mind that you like to share? Uh, just more on the this is good. Um, you know, bad things happen every day and we have a choice of how we look at things. Nothing's good or bad till we decide it is. And so like with COVID, we've been handled this COVID. We've all had our issues with it. And I firmly believe those that have looked at it, all right, here's the challenge, here's the opportunity, are going to come out so much more successful than the ones that are poor me, this has been taken away from me, I'm really struggling. And that's not to take away from what people are going through, I, I, you know, but are we spending our energy dwelling? Are we spending our energy on how we're going to take it and not make it as bad or make it even better in the long run? And so that whole idea of this is good is we have to keep our minds open enough, long enough, alive to allow the good or something different or better to come into our lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you have experiences where things didn't go how you planned, but you stayed alive, you stayed with it, and then it turned out different than anything you could expect, but even better. Mm -hmm. And that's the key of... When we give in that negativity, then we're setting ourselves up for, for failure. But all right, COVID's happened. What can, what can I do about it? You know, I lost my job. What can I do about it? Again, that doesn't mean I don't have sympathy or can feel for people that have lost stuff. But it goes back to that failure. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to use this to bounce back and become successful? Mm -hmm. So that that's my message that's really on my heart right now with COVID. And I don't want to to I don't want it to sound like I have all the answers because this is something I deal with daily too. All right, my job looks so much different, but all right, what am I going to do about it today? Am I going to dwell on it or am I going to like work on something new or better myself in an area? So it's something I'm constantly, you know, having to remind myself of too. You know, if, if it were easy, anybody could do it. I know everybody would do it if it was easy, right? Everybody would do it. And yeah. <laughs> That, that's that's awesome that what you shared and I think we all gotta have that humility of knowing like we're still learning you know um Zig Ziglar he said a quote he was like and, and I kind of referenced it a little bit earlier but he said you know success is not a destination but it's a journey and we're constantly on a journey this is a journey and, and when I really encountered it and really embraced that in my heart it really took a lot of pressure off of me because you know we're, we're, we're so just goal oriented. And once we get to that goal, it's kind of like, well, what's next? And then uh, at times that yeah. can bring some anxiety, but kind of keeping those goals in mind, but knowing like, hey, this is a journey and we're continually growing and growing, connecting with amazing people like you, Tammy, that helps me grow. And yeah, this is a journey and knowing that, you know, we don't have all the answers, but we're definitely going to work on seeking as many as possible and, and kind of making them, you know, correlate with each other to be able to serve others the best way that we can. And and I, I truly appreciate everything that you do as a mental performance coach, impacting young people and and uh, people just in general on how they can become a greater versions of themselves. So I truly believe that you're going to continue. And I'm excited to hear about the, the new book that's going to be coming out. And uh, uh, do you have a date when it's going to be? Your, no, I know, it's I know this is good. It came out this year. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's kind of playing off of that with dealing with adversity. So more on how to handle adversity. So some short stories. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. And again, phenomenal talk. I noticed somebody here just like that Tammy, she is amazing. 
I want to reach out to her. I know she can help me uh, get to my dreams and goals and to help me overcome adversity, help me create better mental performance in my sport or at my job. And can you, do you care to share your information on how, you know, someone yeah. can reach out to you and be able to fellowship with you more? Okay. Um, my email is Tammy, T-A-M-I, at r2lc.com. Uh, website is r2lc.com. And then I'm on Twitter, Tammy Matheny, T-A-M-I-M-A-T-H-E-N-Y. Um, refuse to lose coaching on Instagram. So, uh, you know, I, I would love to en engage with you on social media, even if you don't need my help. So please reach out. Um, also on my website, I have a monthly confidence calendar and it's just a day to day thing that to me, confidence is built what you say, do and think every day. And so it's just kind of like your reminder. So I give you like one nugget every day for you to focus on. So um, on the first page of my website, if you scroll down, you can sign up to get that calendar. So I, I challenge everyone to reach out and start applying that in their lives. Tammy Matheny, you are a powerhouse, a giant. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, in order for us to see farther in order, in, in order for us to see further than others, uh, at times we can stand on the shoulders of giants. And I truly believe you are a giant in the community and, and what you're doing. And I truly believe in everything that you're doing. I'm, I'm so excited that we crossed paths and able to continue to grow together. And I truly appreciate you for coming on GNG uh, podcast and sharing, sharing your wisdom and knowledge. And I am so excited to see what else God has placed in your heart to share with the world. And, and I encourage you to keep serving in your area of gifting because you truly are and you're uh, such an amazing person. And again, thank you so much for your time coming on the show. Well, thank you very much, Chaz. I could say everything about you. I, mean, I look at, you know, what you put up every day for some inspiration. So uh, you keep making a difference as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and lead us out here. Uh, I told each and every one of you, if you didn't believe me by getting that pen and paper, go ahead and get it. Rewind this bad boy. Get the golden nuggets that she laid out there. Phenomenal uh, talk with episode 14 amazing amazing journey of a speak and i want to encourage each and every one of you to stay up with g and g please reach out if we can assist you in any way on helping you serve in your area of gifting and i want to leave you with this i want you to keep the crown on your heart and remember this we are god's echo i love each and every one of you See you next time. Peace.